Coming off of the first movie, the question is, what happens when the leader of your moral center, what happens when that's gone? How does Superman's death impact his world? The beginning of the reign of the Superman, I think, is straight to kind of introduction of these replacements. These four Supermen, what do they each represent? You really saw Lois take control of the story. What if one of them really is Clark, reborn? Are any of them the real Superman or a trace of the real Superman? Superman represents hope. And at the end of Death of Superman, that hope is lost. The question of where we go from there is what we're trying to explore with this story. We learn from Superman Doomsday, deliver the full novel. We're gonna cover the complete story as a two-parter. We were able to take the book and amplify it, kick up the stakes a little bit. So the threat, it's more threatening than ever. The four Supermen, um, they each have their own agenda, some good, some bad. Superboy is, let's say, it's Superman if he had been raised by the Kardashians. John Henry Irons represents the humanity and heart that is that Superman brings to the show. The Eradicator represents the quarter of Superman that is the last son of Krypton. Cyborg Superman is really the power of Superman. He's just a little devoid of, of emotion. Death of Superman is about how we destroy our heroes. And Reign of the Superman is about how we make them. They both have a lot to say about, about us. When Superman is gone, is the hope gone? I think that we find it. We may not be able to bring the beat down, but we sure as hell can make some noise. Am I right? Hey everybody, it's Charlie. They're finally doing Reign of the Superman. How many people remember collecting those comics? This was actually the very first comic book arc that I would pedal around town to gas stations looking for the next title in the series because it would cross over all the Superman titles and they would have like that little triangle number on it so you knew which order to collect them in. This is all following the events of Death of Superman, so you can kind of see how they're just building on the big Superman Justice League arcs in the comics. So after this, maybe we'll do Emerald Twilight, Emerald Dawn, The War of Light, Sinestro Core War, all the big arcs that the death and return of Superman built up towards in DC Comics history. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the DC videos. There's going to be a lot of DC animation in the next year between this, Young Justice, Teen Titans Season 6. I'll link that trailer at the end of this too, because that was a big surprise this weekend. But the big thing here is them refreshing that classic Reign of the Superman comic arc with modern designs. So they're writing their Connor Kent Superboy to be more modern day punk instead of 90s punk rock. If you look at some of the original dialogue and some of the sayings that he had, it actually seems kind of silly now. You're like, this is how people actually talked in the 90s? Is this supposed to be cool? I can't tell because it just seems really silly. They use the Kardashians reference in this, but really, Connor Kent, within this Reign of the Superman arc, obviously most of you know some version of the character, but during this storyline, he just meant to represent the celebrity aspect of Superman cranked up to 11. Like, look at me, I'm so awesome, I'm the most powerful person on the planet, isn't it so awesome to be a celebrity? Like, that's why they mention Kardashians, because the Kardashians are famous for being celebrities. I don't think they revealed that he was the Star Labs clone till later in the arc. And he originally, they were intending just to clone Superman, but Lex Luthor found out about it and mixed his DNA in there too, laid special controls so that he would be able to take over Superboy's mind when he became older. 
So that all went down in a completely separate comic book arc. For the most part, that was just a way to sort of give him a really crazy origin story that they could mine for drama later, but also depower him a little bit because all these Superman have various aspects of Superman's powers or his personality, but you have to imagine it was like DC dividing all of his powers into four quarters. So like Cyborg Superman and the Eradicator feel like they're almost as powerful as Superman, but there are a lot of limitations to that. So John Henry Irons is obviously just meant to represent the everyman aspect of Superman, the blue collar guy that's just trying to make his world a better place with every action he takes, whether it's saving people on the street or being a symbol of justice. He constructs a suit that gives him Superman-like abilities, but he's never quite as powerful as some of the more genetically based Supermen. The backstory of the Eradicator is actually pretty complicated. They retconned it a couple times, but it's basically a Kryptonian program meant to preserve its culture and protect Kryptonians at every cost. So when Superman is almost killed by Doomsday, everyone thinks he's dead because of the biological readings, but he's just on the edge of death. So they put him in a tomb, the Eradicator program is activated, it uses DNA taken from Superman's birthing chamber to create a body for itself, so that also gives it the memories of Superman, so that's why it thinks that it's Superman at first. Because it's not really Superman, it can't absorb sunlight, so it has to use Superman, so it steals his body, takes it back to the Fortress of Solitude, sticks it in a healing matrix where Superman just chills out for the entire arc, in the Eradicator, in order to power himself up like Superman, has to vampire yellow sunlight through the real Superman's body. So it sort of uses him as a tether, and as a side effect of that process, Superman's real body, the real Superman, gets energized, it heals his cells, and he comes back to life. It just takes a long time for that to happen. But that's why the Eradicator wears that yellow band across his eyes, because he's sensitive to sunlight and he can't give off heat vision, but he can give off energy blasts from his hands. And because he's the Eradicator, he has some of Superman's memories, but none of his compassion. So at first glance, he's just meant to feel like the stabby, hardcore version of Superman. But he's really just a Kryptonian program walking around in a Superman-looking body. Cyborg Superman's backstory is way more complicated. So most of you probably know he's Hank Henshaw. Even if you haven't read the comics, you've only seen the Supergirl version of the character. It's basically Hank Henshaw stealing Clark Kent's DNA, making himself look like Superman, albeit with, you know, half cyborg features. The way he explains it when he shows up too, because he's trying to pretend to be Superman, is that he says that he was damaged in the fight with Doomsday and that's why he has the cybernetic parts, but really it's the other way around. He was pure cyborg, he grew himself Clark Kent's skin to wear on top of himself. Same deal with his powers as with the Eradicators. Because he's a derivative of Superman but has some of his DNA, he has some of Superman's original powers, but he's not quite as powerful. The whole thing with his character, though, is that he's playing the long con to get people to trust him the way they trusted Superman so that he can destroy the world. That winds up culminating in him destroying Coast City, which drives Hal Jordan insane, leaving him to succumb to the Parallax entity. DC used that to reboot their Green Lantern comics, so Hal Jordan Parallax kills pretty much the entire Green Lantern Corps. They reboot it when Jeff Johns took over the title, did Emerald Dawn, led to Sinestro Core War, The War of Light, Blackest Night, Brightest Day. So you can kind of see how DC animation is moving through these big comic book arcs. So what they might do after the reign of the Superman is return of Superman, then maybe they'll move into some of the bigger Green Lantern comic book arcs and do the War of Light, Sinestro Core War. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Reign of the Superman storyline and if you actually did try to collect it when it was in comic book stores. What'll happen is, is there's all kinds of Infinity War Blu-ray bonus features that are posting in the next couple of days, but leave all your DC requests in the comments below. Click here to watch that Teen Titans Season 6 trailer again and click here to re-watch the Young Justice Season 3 trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.